Welcome to Marvelous French, French lessons for those who are learning French or who would like to learn French. So now we're going to continue our Closer Look series with part two of our look at an article and tweets having to do with the earthquake that occurred in August 2016 in Italy. So in part one, which you can find a link to in the description box, we looked at the first three paragraphs of a French Huffington Post article, and now we're going to look at some tweets discussing the cartoon. So again, to summarize, there was a very controversial cartoon shown here concerning the earthquake in Italy that was published in Charlie Hebdo, which is a weekly newspaper in France that's known for very controversial drawings. So in this case, we have someone named Melville who went on Twitter and posted the cartoon and had something to say about it. And then there were several very heated responses. So we're going to take a look at that. Now before we do, a disclaimer. The same disclaimer I gave in part one. This is sensitive subject matter and the discussion gets heated. So we'll see some very, very strong language, but it's authentic, it's real, and it's the sort of thing you definitely see out there on the internet. So with that said, we have Melville's first tweet. Charlie Hebdo, non déplaise aux vierges effarouchées, aux apôtres du bon goût et de la censure. Je suis Charlie. So here we have the English translation. No offense to frightened little virgins, preachers of good taste and censorship. Je suis Charlie. So basically he's saying regardless of what the do-gooders out there say, the really sensitive people out there, I support Charlie Hebdo. The Je suis Charlie hashtag means I am Charlie. So this actually stems from a slogan that came up when Charlie Hebdo was the target of terrorist attacks in response to some of the drawings. Many people in France and all over the world took on the Je suis Charlie slogan to show their support. And so he's kind of using the slogan here to once again show his support for Charlie Hebdo. So now let's take a look at some key vocabulary. We have non déplaise à, which means no offense to, with all due respect. And just as in English, a lot of times when we use that phrase, it means that we're actually going to say something that's probably going to offend quite a few people. But at any rate, déplaise is what's called the subjunctive of the verb déplaire, which means to displease. So we have the idea of, I don't want to displease anyone, but... Now again, déplaire is to displease, and plaire, P-L-A-I-R-E, on its own, would mean to please. We also have une vierge, which means a virgin. So this is interesting. The word vierge is feminine in French, and it refers to a virgin girl. If we want to talk about a male virgin, we have to say un homme vierge, a virgin man. We use vierge as the adjective there. There's also the term un puceau that refers to a male virgin, but it can have a kind of ironic or mocking ring to it. Well, next we have effarouché, which means frightened, or scared, so vierge et farouché, frightened virgins. Un apôtre is an apostle or preacher, and here it's kind of used sarcastically. Un apôtre de bon goût, where bon goût is good taste, as in an appreciation for what's appropriate, for what's right. So here again, he's being sarcastic, referring to people who are obsessed with telling other people what's right or what's wrong. And then we have la censure, which means censorship. So now let's take a look at a grammar point here having to do with a and de. Now we see a and de being used quite a lot in Melville's tweet, and we can see that they take on different forms. So a can mean at, to, or in. De can mean of or from. It can also mean some. So when we combine a or de with the, to the, of the, etc., the form is going to change based on the gender and the number of the word the. So we're going to have a masculine form, a feminine form, and a plural form. So let's take a look at a. When we want to say at the, to the, in the, the masculine form of a is o, au. The feminine form is a la. And then we have a with l apostrophe that's used before a singular noun, masculine or feminine, that starts with a vowel. And finally, we have o. A-U-X, which is the plural form, both masculine and feminine. So here are some examples. The various forms of A have been placed in all caps. Je vais à la fac. I'm going to university. 
I'm going to school. So fac is short for faculté, meaning university, and it's feminine, which calls for à la. In our second example here, we have tu vas au café. You're going to the café. So café is masculine, le café. So when we want to say to the café, we need to use our masculine form of à, which is au. Notice that the masculine form of the is le, but when we combine it with the preposition à, it changes to au. We don't say à le café. À plus le becomes au. Au café. And we have our next example here. Vous allez à l'école aujourd'hui? Are you going to school today? So école, school, is feminine singular. But because it starts with a vowel instead of à la, we're going to use à l apostrophe for sound reasons. À la école would sound choppy. À l'école flows better. And we have our final example here. Il donne des cadeaux aux enfants. They give gifts to the children. And in this case, we have enfants, children, which is plural. So we're using the plural form of a here. O, A-U-X. So we said earlier that a plus le, the masculine singular form of the, becomes o, A-U. A plus les, the plural form of the, which we're using here, also changes form and becomes o, A-U-X. Now we have a similar thing that happens with de, which can mean of or from. It can also be the particle meaning some. So we have our masculine form, du, du, which can mean of the, from the, some. De la, which is the feminine form. De with l apostrophe, which again is used with singular nouns, masculine or feminine that start with a vowel. And then the plural, both masculine and feminine, is de, des. So here are some examples. Again, the various forms of de are in all caps. La fille du président s'appelle Marie. The daughter of the president is named Marie. The word president is masculine, so of the here is going to be du. We have our second example here. Il est revenu de la pharmacie. He came back from the pharmacy. He returned from the pharmacy. So pharmacy is feminine, la pharmacie. So from the pharmacy is going to be de la pharmacie. The third example here, voilà les résultats de l'examen. Here are the results of the test. So examen, test, is masculine singular, but it starts with a vowel. So we're going to have to use de with l apostrophe for sound reasons. De l'examen. And we have our final example. Nous avons acheté des pommes. We bought some apples. Pommes. Apples is plural, so we're going to have to use our plural form of de here, de, d-e-s, which means some. Pum is actually feminine plural, and again de is used with both masculine and feminine plural nouns. So now let's take a look at some of the responses to Melville's tweet. Again, a warning, these are very heated discussions with very strong language. So we have someone by the name of Guillon who says, Donne-moi tes coordonnées pour que je vienne faire de l'humour le jour de la mort de ton parent, ton frère, sœur, ou ton enfant. So in English, give me your contact information. Give me your address so I can laugh it up the day your parent dies, your brother, your sister, or your child. So we have donne-moi, which means give me, tes coordonnées, your coordinates, your contact details, name and address, pour que je vienne, so that I can come. So pour que means so that, and it's a set structure that requires the following verb to be conjugated in what we call the subjunctive mood. So we see here, je vienne, V-I-E-N-N-E, -E, coming from the verb venir, to come. So again, this is in what's called the subjunctive mood. The subjunctive mood is used with things that have to do with perception, emotion, desire. And then there are some set phrases, such as pour que, that also require the subjunctive. Now, usually if the verb were in the default indicative mood, which usually has to do with facts or reality, for example, I'm coming to the party, je viens à la fête, that would be viens, V-I-E-N-S. But because this is what's called the subjunctive, triggered by pour que, we're having to use the subjunctive form, which is vienne, 
V-I-E-N-N-E. Now notice the difference in pronunciation. The indicative, je viens, with the nasal sound ia, versus the subjunctive, vien, which is what we have here, that doesn't have the nasal sound. You pronounce the n. So we have the indicative via versus the subjunctive vien. Then we have faire de l'humour, to laugh it up, to make jokes. Le jour de la mort, the day of the death. De ton parent, de ton frère, sœur, ou de ton enfant. Of your parent, your brother, your sister, or your child. So then Melville responds, Donnez-moi les vôtres, je vous tiens au courant. Give me yours, meaning your contact information. I'll keep you posted. So he's being sarcastic here, of course. We have donnez-moi, give me, les vôtres, yours, je, I, vous, you. And then tiens au courant comes from the expression tenir quelqu'un au courant, which means to keep someone up to date, to keep them posted. So I'll keep you up to date. Now, Guillaume responds with, J'espère que votre famille se fera un jour massacrer dans un attentat ou un séisme pour que vous compreniez. Ça lâche. So we have a very strong reply here. I hope that your family gets killed one day in an attack or in an earthquake so that you'll know how it feels. Dirty coward. So we have, J'espère que, which is I hope that, Votre famille, your family, se fera un jour massacrer. So first of all, he's putting this in the future. Will one day get killed? A lot of times if we say, I hope that, he hopes that, etc., using the verb espérer, to hope, if it's something that hasn't happened yet, that's yet to happen, we usually use the future tense in French. And he's also using a construction here, se faire, plus a verb, which means to get or to be. So in this case, se faire massacrer means to get massacred to be killed. And we have the word attentat, which means an attack, and séisme, which means earthquake. And we see here again the structure pour que, which again means in order that, so that. In this case, he's saying pour que vous compreniez, so that you understand. So that comes from the verb comprendre, to understand. If it were the indicative, the usual default, we would say vous comprenez. You understand, ending in EZ. But because we're using pour que, we need to use the subjunctive with the IEZ ending. Vous comprenez. And finally, sale lâche. Sale means dirty. Lâche is a coward. So we have Melville's response here. J'attends toujours vos coordonnées. Dépêchez-vous. So again, he's being sarcastic. I'm still waiting for your contact details. Hurry up. And then Guillaume has another very strong response. J'attends avec impatience que votre famille périsse dans un attentat ou une catastrophe naturelle. Vivement le carnage chez vous. So, I can't wait until your family dies in an attack or a natural disaster. I can't wait for the carnage. So we have j'attends avec impatience. Now, attendre avec impatience is literally to wait with impatience. But in English we would say to not be able to wait for something. And when you use attendre with que, this triggers the subjunctive just as pour que did. So we have votre famille, which is your family, and périsse, which comes from the verb périr, to perish. But again, the form is the subjunctive, triggered by attendre que. So in the indicative, it would be péri, P-E-R-I-T, but because this is the subjunctive form, we're using périsse with a double S-E. And then we have attentat, which again is an attack, and dans une catastrophe naturelle, which literally is a natural catastrophe, what we call a natural disaster. So then we have vivement le carnage chez vous. So vivement is an expression that can mean bring something on, I can't wait for something. So for example, vivement le weekend means I can't wait for the weekend, bring on the weekend. Here it's being used for darker purposes. Vivement le carnage chez vous. So Guillaume can't wait for the carnage, the violence. Now chez vous literally means at your house, but it can also be used in this case to mean in your life regarding you, your family. So basically, 
I can't wait until disaster strikes you and yours. And now let's look at some grammar notes. So one interesting thing here is the use of the formal versus informal for you, your, etc. So in French, we have two ways to say you and your, that sort of thing. We have the true form, which is informal singular when you're talking to one person, a friend, someone you know well, a colleague, family, etc. versus vous, which is what you use when you want to be respectful or formal. It's also used whenever you're talking to more than one person. So vous is you, formal and or plural. So here we have some examples. Tu es mon ami. You're my friend, using the informal tu. Tu me manques. I miss you, or literally, you're missing to me. Again, using the informal tu. So in both cases, we're using tu with someone we know well. Now we have two examples using vous, which is formal. Vous voudriez quelque chose à boire? Would you like something to drink? Je ne vous connais pas, monsieur. I don't know you, sir. So again, in both of these cases, we're talking to strangers or people that we want to be polite with. Now, if we go back to our tweets here, we can see that Guillaume starts with a tu form. So he uses words like te, T-E-S, which means your, that's Y-O-U-R, informal. He uses ton, T-O-N, which also means your, informal. So he's using the tu form with Melville. Now, usually a lot of times tu can be a way of indicating that you feel close with someone. You're comfortable, you're casual. But tu can also sometimes be used in a negative way. If you don't have a lot of respect for someone, even though you don't know them, they're a complete stranger, you might find people using tu. So it can actually be a way of almost talking down to someone, of showing someone that you don't have respect for them. And that could be why Guillaume chooses to use tu here. It's up for interpretation. Now, Melville on his end is using vous, however. So again, usually vous is something you can use when you want to be polite, when you want to be respectful, when you're talking to a stranger. However, depending on the context, vous can also be something that's distancing, that's a little cold. So the fact that Guillaume used the tu form, but Melville is using vous, could be deliberate to show that he wants to keep a certain distance. Another thing to note is that Melville has a rather sarcastic tone here. He comes across as polite, but underneath there's some venom. So vous, which is again usually used to be polite, could be used kind of sarcastically here, where he's just being oh so polite, but again in a very sarcastic way. At any rate, we can see that tu versus vous can be used in a straightforward manner, or sometimes in more subtle ways to set the tone. What's also interesting is that Guillaume then changes from the tu form to the vous form as of the third tweet here. J'espère que votre famille, pour que vous compreniez. So he sort of takes Melville's lead and now starts to use vous as well. So with that said, let's take a look at another grammar point here. The use of the possessive. So there are quite a few what are called possessive adjectives used in the tweets we're looking at. A possessive adjective is the equivalent of your, Y-O-U-R, my, his, etc. And again, we have our informal and formal forms. So the informal way to say your, again, Y-O-U-R, has three possibilities. Ton, ta, te. So ton is used with masculine singular nouns. Ta is used if the noun is feminine singular. And if the noun is plural, whether that be feminine or masculine, we're going to use te, T-E-S. So here we have some examples. Ton livre. Your book. Livre is masculine, so we use a masculine form of your, which is ton. Ta voiture. Your car. Voiture is feminine, and so now we have to use the feminine form of your. Ta. Tes amis. Your friends. So ami is plural, which triggers the plural form of your. Te. So basically, there are three ways to say the informal your, and they change based on the gender and number of the noun that they're used with. So it doesn't matter if the person themselves, the owner, so to speak, the person the noun belongs to, is a man or a woman. What's important is the noun. So for example, let's say you're a man, and we want to say your sister. We'll say ta sœur. We'll use the feminine form because the word sister, sœur, is feminine. 
It doesn't matter that you, the possessor, are male in French. So now if we look back at our tweets, we see that Guillon uses tes coordonnées in that first message, your coordinates. So because the word coordinates is plural, he's using te. Then he says your parent. Parent is masculine singular, so he uses ton. Ton parent. We see ton frère, your brother, which is also masculine singular. And then he doesn't specify, he doesn't use the word your with sister, but if he did, it would be ta sœur. Ta being the feminine singular form of your. And then we have ton enfant, which is masculine singular. So again, ton ta te are the informal forms of your. Now the formal version of your is going to be votre for singular nouns, and that's for both the feminine and masculine form. And if the noun is plural, that's going to be vos, V-O-S, which is also used for both the feminine and masculine plural forms. So we have some examples here. Votre livre, your book. Livre is masculine singular, so we're using votre, which is the masculine singular form of the formal version of your. Then we have votre voiture, your car. Voiture is feminine, so we're using the feminine singular formal form of your, which is votre. And finally, we have vos amis, your friends, where ami is plural. And so now we're using the plural form of your formal, which is vos. So we see, for example, in the third tweet here by Guillon, votre famille, your family. He's using the formal singular form of your there because famille is singular feminine, which calls for votre. Now, if we compare that with vos coordonnées, your contact details, in the reply below from Melville, coordonnées is plural, so that calls for the plural form of your, which is vos. And finally, in the second tweet here from Melville, we see les vôtres, which is the formal form of yours, Y-O-U-R-S. So Melville says, donnez-moi les vôtres, give me yours. Yours is what's called the possessive pronoun. Other examples are mine, hers, theirs, etc. But here he's using les vôtres, which means yours. So we see that there's an accent circonflex, which looks like an upside down V over the O. There is a pronunciation difference between votre without the accent, which means yours and your car, your house, etc., and les vôtres with the accent, which means yours. So O with the accent is pronounced O, les vôtres. Without the accent, O is more open, E, votre. So here are some more examples of the formal vous form of yours, the possessive pronoun. Note that we put the word the in front of votre, and that the changes to match the noun it's referring to. So le vôtre is used for masculine singular nouns, la vôtre for feminine singular nouns, and les vôtres with an S on the end of vôtre is used for plural nouns. So we have ce livre est le vôtre, is this book yours, where we're using le vôtre, which is masculine singular, to match with livre which is also masculine singular. Then we have, cette voiture est la vôtre? Is this car yours? So now we're using la vôtre, which is feminine singular, to match with voiture, which is also feminine singular. And finally we have, ces livres sont les vôtres? Are these books yours? And now we're using les vôtres, which is the plural form of yours, to match with livre, which is also plural here. And finally, if we look again at our tweets, we see quite a few commands used here, what's called the imperative, do this, do that. So we see here in Guillaume's first tweet, for example, donne-moi, give me, which is the informal to form. In Melville's reply, just below that, we see donnez-moi, also give me, but the formal vous form. And then in the fourth tweet, Melville says, dépêchez-vous, hurry up. Now, a lot of times you'll say, give me, give her, give them. In that case, you'll have your verb in the imperative, followed by a hyphen, and then whoever needs to be given to or what have you. So, donne-moi, give me, where moi means me. Now, with the command, dépêchez-vous, hurry up, that actually comes from a reflexive verb, se dépêcher, to hurry. 
as if you're saying, hurry yourself up. So that vu there is actually referring to guillon, hurry yourself up literally. The vu is the reflexive portion meaning yourself, but in English we would just say, hurry up. So let's take a look at some examples of the imperative over here on the right. We have the verb parler, to talk in the imperative. So in general, the command form is pretty straightforward. You have tu, vous, and nous commands. Tu is informal singular, vous is formal and or plural, and the nous form is the equivalent of let's do something or other. The conjugation is based for the most part on the present tense. So we have parle, talk, the informal tu form. Note that for regular ER verbs, such as parler, you take off the S ending for the true form, so that gives us P-A-R-L-E without the S. We have parlons, let's talk, which is the new command form, and parler, talk, the formal and or plural vous form. Then we see examples where we specify who we want someone to talk to. We use a hyphen in each case. Parle-moi, talk to me, where moi means me. Parlons lui, let's talk to him, where lui means to him, and parlez nous, talk to us, where nous means to us. We then have a reflexive verb, se réveiller, which means to wake up, literally to wake oneself up. So we have the verb réveiller, which is a regular ER verb, conjugated the same as it would be in the present tense, except for the true form, where we again take off the S. And then we follow the verb with a hyphen and the reflexive pronoun, meaning yourself or ourselves. So that gives us réveille-toi, wake yourself up, where toi means yourself, informal. Réveillons-nous, let's wake up, where nous means ourselves. And réveillez-vous, the formal and or plural command for wake up, where vous is the formal or plural form of yourself. So that concludes part two of our look at an article and tweets having to do with the August 2016 Italian earthquake. In part three, we're going to take a look at an additional set of tweets, and you'll find that the language is even more colorful there. But for now, if you found this video helpful, please feel free to like, share, comment, and subscribe. So again, this is Meredith with Marvelous French, and as always, à la prochaine! See you next time.